So this is a Heatcraft QRC quick response controller equipped evaporator coil. It's essentially a dumbed down beacon system. Uh, it, it does not have any communication with the equipment on the roof. So you've just got an evaporator with a electronic expansion valve and some sensors. It is capable of doing smart defrost. It, but again, it has no interconnection to the roof. So it's, it's a, essentially a beacon board, but just not on the components of the beacon system. It uh, runs off of 208 single phase. There is no interconnecting heater uh, wires from a defrost clock on the roof because the defrost clock is built into the board. So you just run 208 single phase over there into the electrical section. There's a low voltage transformer that steps the voltage down for the circuit board and the circuit board does all the work. It has the relays for the defrost and everything on it. So I am just doing a startup on this. We put the equipment in yesterday, just the evaporator I should say. It was an existing uh, retrofit installation. So we worked with what we had, but um, I'm just making sure everything's working. The box is down to temp. Little things like our suction temperature sensor needs some cork tape around it, and then I'm gonna test the defrost and make sure everything's working properly. There was some ice on the evaporator. There's our return air temp. That should actually be down a little bit more. That's good. We've got a drain line heater on it. Everything's looking good so far. This system has a Corel. Uh, electronic expansion valve and they do not utilize a liquid line solenoid valve. They use the expansion valve as the liquid line solenoid valve. And then, yeah, there's really not much more. Uh, they've just got a suction pressure transducer that converts the pressure to a digital signal. It runs to the circuit board. It's currently negative one degrees and it's cooling right now. So what we're gonna do is actually force a defrost so we can test the defrost. We just hold the force defrost button and it's going into pump down now. And then while it's in pump down, it's gonna run the fans for a minute, utilize any warmth out of the air, and then it'll turn the heaters on. So this unit comes with, I threw it into defrost so I can test the heaters. It comes with a pretty cool manual. Um, if you don't have the manual right on the outside of the panel right there, it tells you what everything means too. So we're gonna go through the Sky program review, A through E is gonna be air or electric defrost, so we're on electric. Select the refrigerant type, 404. Box temp, negative 10. This is a walk-in freezer. The superheat, running at seven degrees. The uh, SLA is whether or not the board is a slave, so you can do multi-evap, this is not. Demand defrost, we have it turned off. DFN is the number of defrost per day, so that's four. DFF is defrost fail safe time, so it's a 30 minute defrost. DFT is defrost termination temperature, so that's the max temp it'll let it get to, 60 degrees. DFS is delay start time, we don't have to worry about that, but you could essentially kind of predict the defrost. If you don't power down the coil, we can say we don't want it to start until two hours from this point, so therefore you can kind of do the math and figure out when the defrost is gonna be. ALH is alarm high temperature, alarm low temperature. We don't have an alarm contact hooked up to this. ALT is the alarm time before the alarm sounds. It's not a sound before it triggers the contacts. Fahrenheit or Celsius, we're on Fahrenheit. And then F and 5 is a stir cycle. Fans, we have that off. So, yeah, it's really not anything complicated. Um, there's certainly uh, systems that I find to work um, a little bit more efficiently. Uh, I'm not a fan of using the smart defrost with this controller because I've run into a lot of problems. For instance, when I got here this morning, when we got done installing it yesterday, we left the smart defrost. Um, on and I came in today and it was iced up. Now granted I just ran it through a defrost and it defrosted itself but with this particular style I'm going to leave it in uh, normal defrost mode so it's just going to do four defrosts a day. And that's pretty much it. We're going to go over and test the defrost heaters now. Typical electrical section. Lift a little bit inside here. This is the stuff I'm looking for to make sure we didn't leave stuff. So a typical electrical section. Your control transformer is back there. You have to tap it for the right voltage. Your heaters are all in the coil, but if you notice, 
um, you know, you don't have all the interconnecting wires. We actually ran two extra wires for later for a uh, communication setup. We're gonna run a twist timer basically that powers down the coil when they open the doors. So, um, but yeah, you know, you don't have anything hooked up to your X, your number four. The board does all the math for you. Other than that, it's nothing too fancy. It's just a normal coil. They just integrated that smart defrost into it. So we're all good to go. They give you a little window too, so you can see up in there. Yeah, everything's looking good. So the QRC controller, like I said, there's no intercommunication. So all that we're running is 208 volt single phase down to the coil. There's no X terminal, there's no heater wire, there's not even a defrost clock installed in this. It's just a contactor. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So nothing fancy. Um, I'm not gonna say they don't work. I'm just not, a, my personal preference, I'm not a fan. You know, up until recently, I wasn't a fan of, of uh, smart defrost systems. Especially on this one, the QRC, I have nothing but problems when you leave it in smart defrost, where, or adaptive defrost. And basically what that is, is it uses the sensors to calculate whether or not they need to do a defrost and it skips defrost, okay? But until recently when I found that uh, key to therm controller, the key to therm system, um, I'm trying to sell one right now. So they're a great, great system. I really like them. I was a little frustrated like I had made in one of my videos before with uh, the display on the key to therm controller. But once I was able to log into that system, it blew my mind. I, I am much a, a much bigger fan of the Key to Therm Smart Defrost systems. So this is the Heatcraft QRC. You know, it is what it is. I don't supply this equipment. The customer supplies it. I just installed it for him. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so this was just a little uh, review of the Heatcraft QRC, and that stands for Quick Response Controller. Essentially, it's an off-the-shelf item you can purchase from your uh, wholesaler. It comes pre-installed. Um, I believe that if you install a QRC system, I believe they get a, a, an extended warranty on some components in the system too, I think. Um, but, you know, like I said, I didn't sell this equipment to the customer. They purchase it themselves uh, and then just have me install it. So I really have nothing to do with that. But, I mean, it's a decent system. It honestly was my first introduction. I've installed probably 10 or 12 of these evaporators. And it was my, my first introduction into the smart defrosting evaporators. Um, I do have a lot of problems with the smart defrost function when it's set up on a walk-in freezer with the heat craft one. I tend to see a lot of freeze ups that cause nuisance service calls. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is, you know, to each their own. Some people like this brand versus the other. I kind of explained too that this is kind of a dumbed down beacon system. It's, it's essentially the beacon two controller, but it just doesn't have any interconnection with the roof, with the equipment. So you're not running low voltage up to the condensing unit or anything like that. This one essentially just, you know, opens the expansion valve and the condensing unit turns on and off via the low pressure control. So, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, really want to say thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video. Um, you know, check out some of the other channels I recommend. They've got some good content too. Some of these guys much better than I. So, um, you know, that's it. See you guys on the next one. Okay.